installation of the system. The latitude is minus 34, so that should be your tilt angle. Tilt angle should be about 34 degrees. And the panel will look, of course, straight north. Orientation will be zero degrees north. Uh, that is the panel. You can also see the climate. It's a, it's a Mediterranean type of climate. And if, we, if we just compare that, that, that color and that color is the same. Right? It looks the same. So <laughs> it's a Mediterranean type of climate for Cape Town. So this is just, uh, remember this is a prototype. We haven't mass produced it yet. The, the, the idea is to, yes, mass produce and then put on different sites. Uh, this is only for one specific tilt angle. If we want to do number of tilt angles, we use the jig, which I spoke to you earlier about. So in this case, there's my lamp, just inside a cup, just to hold it there. Uh, again, why are we using a uh, LED lamp? Very, very simple. It mimics, it mimics the profile of a solar charger. We've, we've established that in research. And it is very consistent in its performance. Where solar charge and a battery, the performance can change because of the internal structure of a battery. It's not always consistent. So in this case, we have a 3.3 volt regulator that's just to run the ESP8226 and the ADC, analog to digital converter. Of course, the ADC is just there to create some extra analog inputs for us. And current sensing, we're just doing it the old-fashioned way using uh, inline resistors. Okay, so it's just the voltage drop across a, a 4 ohm uh, resistor. We can now determine uh, the current. So we are just measuring voltages. But then we are doing some calculations in the ESP2 to get current and then, of course, to do the power calculation. So that's basically what it looks up in terms of the block diagram. We're using the DHT22. I think some of you are familiar with that. It's a temperature sensor used with the Arduino microprocessor extensively. And that's the 4 watt LED lamp we are using. So we, the, the module is a 10 watt, but we are not drawing the, the full potential from the module. Remember that the point is just to get the logging right. Remote logging is what we are, we are interested in and to be able to analyze that. So eventually if you want to um, get the optimum energy out of the module, then that 4 watt will have to be doubled. You can, of course, um, just parallel the LED lamps. Uh, that's what we've done with previous research, and then you'll get very close to your optimum power from the module. So it's an experimental research design. We're collecting quantitative data. We installed it in 2017, so 2017, then we did some calibration fault finding, and then we had a hectic period of load shedding. I don't know who of you are familiar with the term load shedding. Very good. Load shedding. So load shedding, what happens is if I'm staying in a the neighborhood, they'll switch the power off to the neighborhood for two hours. The next day, again two hours. The next day, again two hours. And so each neighborhood will get its charge to be off for two hours. Because the, the, the national grid in South Africa, the national energy supplier, does not have enough energy to give to the entire country. Now you can think, ladies and gentlemen, the havoc it wrecks on SMMEs, especially a butchery, a cafe, a small cafe. I mean, for two hours to switch off a refrigerator in Africa where there's so much heat, you're losing all your meat, you're losing all your perishables immediately. So it's really having a big dent on the economy. Uh, we were promised, well not we, the national supply in South Africa was prom promised a 7 billion rand loan from China. Fortunately, it doesn't come through because the China government or whatever is from China who has promised the money is standing back at the moment because it's not going well with the national supply in South Africa. So I don't know if we're still going to have power next year. So we that, have uh, almost five hours for water. Five? Daily for every house. Wow. Not now, in certain states in India. Five. And if rain? Pakistan is even worse. Really? <laughs> wow. Six hours in the Power consumption has gone so high. Yeah. So, it's, it, so even in India and Pakistan? Yeah, the, I think one of the things, I don't know about India, but uh, the management and the losses and the, uh, what you call, uh, illegal tapping. Uh, tapping mm -hmm. Yes. That is the main problem. <laughs> So, light shedding, ladies and gentlemen, not in South Africa. <laughs> but you are fortunate yes. not to have load shedding. <laughs> I was in Dubai a few weeks ago, ladies and gentlemen. It's unbelievable. The amount of energy they, they use there, there's no load shedding. That's why it's one of the. There is no concept, even, I mean, in, in Europe, like in Denmark. There's no concept. Nobody can think of you know, having, having no power for two hours. No power for two hours. Yeah. Nobody can imagine. 
came from that. So just coming back to the presentation, so that created havoc with a Wi-Fi hotspot. Remember that we were connecting through a Wi-Fi hotspot? Wi-Fi hotspots are being um, installed more and more in South Africa and they're becoming free at one stage you had to pay, but now more and more of them are becoming uh, freely available to the public. And so we just tap into one of those hotspots. But of course, if there's load 